All right, it looks like we're live. Uh, what's going on, everybody? Welcome to an uh, experiment on my channel. I'm going to try out uh, the series weekend watch party starting tonight. If it goes over well, hopefully I'll do more of these watch party videos in the near future. So, how is this video going to work? Well, uh, this experiment, uh, I'm actually watching the film... The five movie collection, but I'm watching this one next of kin. Uh, I got it. Uh, I, my my laptop actually has a DVD hooked up in it, so I put the DVD in with my headphones plugged up, and I'll be watching and reacting to this film for the first time. If anyone is joining me live watching this, you can feel free and watch along with me, or if you're watching the replay. Uh, you can do the same thing as well if you're watching this after the fact. And uh, we'll be sitting watching uh, this movie Next of Kin, uh, starring uh, Patrick Swayze. That's the name of the movie we're going to be watching tonight. And uh, I, I checked to see if... Uh, I checked to see if this was on any streaming services. I looked it up. I have an app on my phone called Just Watch, which does a mostly good job of letting you know if this mo if the movies are on streaming services. I couldn't find it on any streaming service, but I did see if you're if you're like me and sometimes if you can't find movies on streaming services but you're still interested in watching them. Uh, sometimes I'll rent them on YouTube. You can look up the movie up and you and it, uh, it says buy or rent. I usually rent it. It's usually about uh, three or four bucks to, to rent a movie in HD. So there's that option. Uh, I'm going to watch this movie as more of an experiment to see if this watch party is going to work uh, without having any like copyright blocking issues from YouTube more likely and if this goes over well like i said i plan on doing more of these weekend watch party videos going forward a interesting new approach on uh growing content on my channel when i'm scaling back a little bit on the movie reviews i feel like the weekend watch parties is a pretty decent alternative on how to still have entertaining content on the channel that people can you know sit and interact with me and uh we can watch some of these movies together. So, uh, I'm going to start Next of Kin in a few minutes. Like I said, I have the DVD of this. Uh, it's actually a five movie set. Uh, uh, it's got Next of Kin. I might do some of these other ones in upcoming watch parties. Tango and Cash. The Last Boy Scout, which is so underrated from Tony Scott. And there's Unknown and Under Siege. Uh, this is more of an extension because uh, Next of Kin, if you've watched my past videos, I used to do a series called Vlog in the Movies, where I would react to movies I'd never seen before in my physical, physical media collection. I originally drew Next of Kin in early August, but uh, when I decided to uh, shrink the content on my channel recently... I, vlog in the movies was one of the series that made the cut, but I decided to keep the idea of vlog in the movies into the weekend watch party. So that uh, was what gave me the idea to do Next of Kin as the experimental installment of weekend watch parties. So if anyone wants to watch this movie with me, uh, if you have it on DVD, uh, like I said, uh, I checked the, the movie's currently not on any streaming services, but uh, if but you can uh, rent it on YouTube if you want to watch it along with me. I plan on starting the film in a couple of minutes. Uh, just note if you're uh, commenting on the live chat, uh, I'll be watching the movie. I got uh, the DVD set up in here. I probably won't see the comments since I'll be watching this movie for the first time until once the movie's over. So if I don't comment on the live comments, it's not that I've ignored it. It's because I'll be in the middle of watching a movie, and I won't see the live comments until after the fact. So that's just something to uh, consider in these watch parties. This is still a work in progress, and I'm excited to see where this is going to go in the near future. If it all goes well tonight, I already have a weekend watch party set up 
for next weekend and it might be a potential collab we'll just have to wait and see i'll reveal more in uh the week preview on my community tab if you're subscribed to my channel so that's uh some of the upcoming uh that's like some of the upcoming plans that i got planned for this weekend watch party series so um uh, I think in just a, like a minute or two, I'll be starting uh, Next of Kin. I haven't seen any responses in the live chat. Uh, I feel like most of the responses I'll get will be after the fact. So, uh, that wants to watch this with me. So, um, like I said, I'm about to watch the movie Next of Kin. Uh, I've never heard of this movie until I bought this collection. Uh, I know it, I did look it up. It came out in 1989. It stars uh, Patrick Swayze. If I look on here, it might say who else is in this movie. Uh, it also has uh, Adam Baldwin, Helen Hunt, Bill Paxton, and Liam Neeson. I did look up the director before uh, I started this watch party. John Irvin, a director I'm not as familiar with, but I see, but he's directed movies from like the 80s and 90s. He actually directed a Robin Hood adaptation in 91, which got overshadowed because Robin Hood Prince of Thieves came out the same year. And I think his version had, I think, Tim Roth in it, which sounds kind of interesting. So, uh, we'll see how this movie Next of Kin does. Uh, I'm excited to check it out in a few minutes. And uh, Okay, I've rented the movie on YouTube, but I can't figure out how to watch the movie and you at the same time. Um, yeah, I'm. this is going to be interesting. Uh, I, I haven't... Uh, might have... Like, I'm not even... I'm, uh, I guess I'm not even going to look at... Uh, my own uh, uh, stream while I'm watching the movie so I think uh, do you have me on like another tab or something I can watch you on the TV and watch the movie on my phone okay that could work uh, let's get that set up and if you're ready to go then we'll uh, do this but uh, and I'll be watching the movie for myself. Have you seen this movie before, Jason? I'm really curious. Alright, I'll uh, give Jason a minute to set his, uh, to set him up, uh, set, get his set up. Uh, never heard of it. Uh, yeah, I'm not as familiar with this movie either. Uh, I'm curious if people like uh, Rashad and Blacktastic Media have heard of this movie uh, since they grew up during the 1980s, that era of action movies. Uh, all right. All right, I'll give... Uh, I'll give Jason a couple more minutes, uh, and then I'm probably about the 10 minute mark is when I'll start the movie. All right, this is going to be exciting. Hopefully this uh, turns out well, because the last time I did, I, I toyed with the idea of watch parties, watch alongs on my channel, but I got discouraged uh, because I did a watch party on the Polar Express. Uh, when I did my Christmas series last year, and it got blocked, and I think the reason that that happened was because uh, you could hear the sound in the background on the stream, and because the Polar Express has copyrighted songs, I think that triggered YouTube, so I'm going to do it in this method where I got the headphones, and I'm watching it on the laptop plugged in, so you won't hear the music or anything in the background. Yeah, it's just going to be me watching the movie and reacting to it. So, uh, a few more seconds and I uh, plan on starting this movie. So, this is going to be exciting. I hope it actually turns out pretty good. Uh, uh, 
All right, so we're at the 10-minute mark, and uh, I'm actually planning on starting the movie uh, pretty much right now. Um, anyone watching this live or after the fact, uh, I'm going to count to five, and then uh, once I'm done counting, I'm going to press play, and we're going to watch the movie. So I'll be starting the movie in five Four, three, two, one, play. And here we go. Next of kin. Got the Warner Brothers logo going on. Got the jaw harp. I've always liked that instrument, so it has a cool sound. Got the cast. We got Patrick Swayze. I wasn't used to hearing country music in the score. Adam Baldwin. I like him in Firefly. Helen Hunt. Alright. I'm not familiar with that actor, Andreas Castellus. Bill Paxton, that dude's awesome. Ben Stiller, <laughs> one of his early roles, that's going to be fun to watch. Some of the other actors. Usually the supporting cast of your character actors I'm not as familiar with. And Liam Neeson. Oh, we got more of a rocking sound.
<laughs> the TV is cracked. There's no way they can watch the TV. Oh. Yeah, I'm already liking uh, Patrick Swayze's character already. He's using more of his, uh, I'd say, uh, the roots of his raising uh, to have civil conversations to get the job done. It's actually pretty dope. I haven't seen too many of Patrick Swayze's movies. I think I've only seen this. I'd like to say Point Break. So Patrick Swayze, I'm not as familiar with as an actor. Oh, there's Bill Paxton. Yeah, I'm, uh, I think this is one of Bill Paxton's earliest roles, if I'm not mistaken. He's, uh, I'm, I'm really liking his performance already. You can see the friction between the two brothers. And he, he even has a good accent, too. Like, he's pulling that hillbilly accent real well. Oh man, what Helen Hunt? She's 
a little younger for what I'm used to seeing her. I know she and uh, Bill Paxton later starred in Twister. She's flirting with Patrick Swayze this time. That's pretty interesting. <laughs> ben Stiller. Well, that's going to be interesting. It looks like Ben Stiller is going to be working for the mob. I think this is long before Ben Stiller found his footing as a comedic actor. Yeah, I think the first movie he was in, he was in uh, Steven Spielberg's Vampire of the Sun, which when I watched it for the first time, I was in shock. I'm like, wait, was that Ben Stiller in the prison camp? That's just trippy. Oh, we got a... Uh, Redneck romantic throwdown. I wonder if Patrick Swayze is actually playing that fiddle. <laughs> This movie is already piquing my interest already. Uh, we're, if you're new to this, uh, if you're catching this live, we're 12, 12 minutes into Next of Kin, and I'm watching it for the first time in this watch party. This is a Patrick Swayze movie from 1989. <laughs> oh wow, that character, the character hanging out with Big Bill Paxton just said, it's never good to mix rap and country together. Oh man. Uh, wait till Jason Aldean came out with Dirt Road Anthem. That's, uh, country and rap is just a weird combo. It's...
Well, it's hard to take down uh, Bill Paxton driving one of them big box trucks and the bad guys are trying to use a regular car to stop it. Those trucks are hard to stop. Uh, well, they were able to pull them off. Oh man, it's game over, man. It's game over. Oh, oh, not good. Yeah, I don't. Yeah, Ben Stiller's role in this movie is intriguing me, that's for sure. <laughs> so I'm used to seeing the funny Ben Stiller in movies like Madagascar, Night at the Museum, and Tropic Thunder. Bill Paxton is rocking that accent even during this torture scene. <laughs> Gail Gates. Bill Paxton is a goner. 17 minutes into the movie. Holy cow. He didn't even get a fair fight. Ben Stiller just said to the other guy, what are you, what are you doing? He's like, what are you doing? I didn't sign up for this. I'd rather be at night at the museum. I'd rather do Tropic Thunder over this. So it looks like this is going to be a revenge story. Patrick Swayze taking out the guys who killed his brother.
cracks me up that the head gangster's name is Papa John. Does he have a, does he have a pizza chain as well? Looks like we're going to have a train sequence coming up. If you followed my channel for a while, I'm a sucker for trains. So if we get a cool train scene, I think it's going to get some extra points. Or is it just uh, Patrick Swayze getting off the train? Uh, they just traveled. I like how the score in this movie uses a lot more countryer instruments, I guess, to reflect Patrick Swayze's character and his uh, redneck upbringing. Uh, pretty unique for an action movie, too, especially during this time. Oh, we got Liam Neeson's in his family. singing uh, Leaning on the Everlasting Arms, a song I'm definitely familiar with in the uh, church world. Uh, it's actually one of my favorite church songs that we sing. Peace, Bill Paxton.
Liam Neeson is really trying to go for it in that uh, hillbilly southern accent. I don't know if it's fully convincing or not, because that's not what I'm used to hearing from out of Liam Neeson. But gotta give him credit for trying. I'm curious if Helen Hunt actually knows how to play that, or if she's just a good faker, I don't know. Pretty lovely melody she's playing. Oh wow, that's uh, that's uh, sounds like Charlie Daniels. I love, I know me some country music. That's the genre that I grew up listening to, and I have a big soft spot for it. I still can't get over Liam Neeson's accent. <laughs> <laughs> it's, it's, I, it's, I, I'm struggling to take Liam Neeson's accent seriously. Like, I just hear Liam Neeson's normal voice trying to sound country. I can just hear, I just hear Liam Neeson's normal voice.
trying to sound uh, like he's from the South. <laughs> it's just so trippy. <laughs> just imagine uh, Liam Neeson going and taking, I don't know who you are and what you want, but I've been trained with a particular set of skills. I will find you and I will kill you. I don't think you can take the movie Taken seriously if Liam Neeson talks like that. So, if anyone's new watching this live, I'm 31 minutes into the movie Next of Kin. I'm doing a watch party on this movie. This Patrick Swayze movie from 1989. If you have the DVD or you want to rent it from YouTube and want to catch up, be my guest. I'm at the part where Patrick Swayze is shooting a bow and arrow. Doing some target practice. I'm already uh, liking the conflict in this movie. You got Patrick Swayze who moved out of his uh, small uh, hillbilly town to be a cop, and he's clashing with his uh, hillbilly family. Uh, they think he's sold out pretty much, and he's trying to abide by the law, but they want to do the whole uh, revenge thing. I'm already seeing a lot of uh, conventional, generic action revenge story plot beats, but the whole uh, redneck hillbilly aspect is actually making this film uh, stand out from most action movies that I've seen. That's what I'm respecting about this movie already.
Yeah, it's still a little trippy seeing Ben Stiller in this movie. Yeah, he's... This movie's not really showing off his best strengths as an actor. He, it just seems like one of those... Oh, I'm just gonna do get whatever acting job I can get at, at the moment. Yeah, Ben Stiller's best strengths is comedy. It's weird seeing Ben Stiller play the spoiled son of a gangster. <laughs> oh man, that kid's smart. He's when you Oh wow. Well. <laughs> <laughs> well he just paid some Play just paid some kids to strip the bad guy's car. <laughs> That's too funny. Well, there's Liam Nation driving a GMT truck. Still trying to pull off a Cajun accent. Let's see, where are we at? We're now 41 minutes into the stream, into the movie. If, if you wanna, if you're new to the live stream and you wanna check out. Oh. Oh, that one dude in the apartment, that guy. Oh, I know that guy. That was, uh, that, was that guy in Scrooge that Bill Murray was talking to. The one in the homeless shelter. I think as far I have a feeling Liam Neeson's trying to do all the revenge stuff. Well, Patrick Swayze's trying to do the uh, investigating, be by the book. That's what it looks like the story's going.
You took over, man, that, man, you're pretty brutal. You're taking over a business originally owned by George Miller. Ah, guess it's no big loss. George Miller went and made Mad Max Fury Road. I take it Liam Neeson's character in this movie you can pretty much describe as the redneck Taken. You know, I actually have never seen Taken, actually. I just know about the, uh, I will find you and I will kill you line, but I've never actually seen Taken. <laughs> kind of hard to believe, uh... Yeah, Liam Neeson in stealth mode. What they gonna do? I don't know if we'll see much of Liam Neeson's act action abilities because I don't think he really got into that until I know in 1990 he did Dark Man, which is Sam Raimi. So that came out like a year after this movie. I'd like to say. And then, of course, he then played Qui-Gon Jinn 
in 99, and then he's now doing his action movie stuff from starting the Taken all the way to present. Taken was like 2009, I'd like to say. This was long before Ian Neeson became the, uh, the, the big action movie star that he is now. anyone's tuning in live we are 51 minutes into the movie next of kin if, if you want to catch up Neeson's about to go crazy. <laughs> that accent, man, that accent is just crazy. Get your boot down. <laughs> Liam Neeson may have that goofy accent, but he means business. He's, he's shooting their video games and pinball machines.
I wonder if they're going to take Liam Neeson out, these bad guys. And Patrick Swayze is going to have to break his uh, moral code. That might be where the story is going. <laughs> oh. oh. Hey, we're, hey, we're still gonna. Hey, even in 1989, we're still getting to see some cool Liam Neeson stuff. The accent may not be, the accent may not be the most convincing, but he just threw a dude off of the, he just threw a dude off the the window of his apartment. That he's ringing. That's pretty dope. I doubt he did that stunt that he just did from roof to train, but. Liam Neeson. Liam Neeson's the man. This chase scene is going on. We're actually an hour into the movie, so uh, it's uh, keeping my attention so far. I gotta say, hopefully, it, hopefully it's got a good payoff to it all. Jumping on the other train. Not near as suspenseful as uh, Tom Cruise on the top of the bullet train in the first Mission Impossible, but. I guess this is a good audition, a good warm up. I think I recognize the country artist in the bar scene. Sounds like uh, Ricky Van Shelton, if you're familiar with him. Uh, big in the uh, late 80s and early 90s.
Ooh. We got a bar fight. Engaging because I can see where you know both of these characters are coming from Patrick Swayze and Liam Neeson. I'll say, I, I'll say, Swayze has more of the moral argument, he's by the book.
Take uh, some of these weapons. See the height thing that uh, reconciles bond between the brothers.
They're trying to protect you and save your reputation too, bro. Come on now, Liam. You should have think that. You should have thought that through. Had that good moment the previous night. Come on. I was confused. I was confused on what he threw at her. That was red paint, huh? of kin if anyone is joining the stream now uh, we're at the tail end of next of kin everything's about to go down it's a uh, clash between two brothers on how to take uh, on justice on their brother being killed
Oh, wow, well, I got George Jones playing in the background in this bar. Man, I like this country bar. I love George Jones. He stopped loving her today is a fantastic song along with White Lightning. Oh, oh, wow. Oh, wow. Ben Stiller got a grisly death off screen. I wish we saw that, though. I think of Neeson, think of Neeson going crazy with a redneck accent. Man. Oh, wow. I kind of wanted to see that. I have a good feeling Liam Neeson's not gonna make it. To, uh, he's not gonna make. He might be killed off. As I predicted. Oh, we got that guy. Let's see if I'm right on this prediction. Looks like they got Liam Neeson.
wow, Sweetie. Sweetie, this is bad. He's gonna, he's gonna take him himself. Sweetie. down to the last 20 minutes. Dude's got a big giant snake. What the heck is this? Oh man, it's just so your extended family is now going after him. You forgot one.
is a nightmare office. A lot of snakes. climactic shootout. Okay, Patrick Slady just turned into Rambo, just shooting with the bow and arrow. Clearly just the air. He should have just gone. Oh, we got shot. Blood everywhere. Oh, we got another one.
we got the got the family going doing some crazy stuff. I, one guy just took the one dude out of a hatchet. The bear trap. Uh, bringing the, I'm bringing the hills to the get to the mob. Oh, the bus of the snakes. That is brutal. Well, he's got some good punches. Not intimidated by that knife. Ah, uh, yeah, I had a feeling Papa John's going to kill one of his own. Ah, uh, okay. That actually does make sense because all of the negative actions that he calls led to the consequences of... Papa John's son, Ben Stiller, ultimately getting killed. That was actually a pretty fair ending. I respect that. That way the movie doesn't come off as uh, hypocritical in what it's trying to say. Because I thought Swayze was going to go full on revenge and uh, kill himself, but that wasn't really what he stood for. 
I like that you know, he still was able to stay in character. He did some self-defense tactics when they got at him. But at the end, he still had the, uh, the right ground at the end. I respect that. So, um, that's, we're at the, we just finished Next of Kin. The credits are rolling. Alright, let's see what we got. Oh, we got two comments in the, uh, chat. Hey bro, good luck on this watch along, break a leg. Also question, what are your thoughts on the movie X? Um, I haven't seen X. Um, I can't really comment on that movie. So, uh, I just saw you just dropped your review of it. I'll need to check it out. I haven't seen it yet. Uh, pack attack. I gotta go to bed. Got work early tomorrow. Would be down to watch more of these though. Well, you can always check out the replay and watch it then, or you can uh, join me on one of my next ones. <laughs> I never thought I'd see an Irish hillbilly. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, Liam Neeson. That was a that was a casting for sure. Um, but, as for the movie, um, Jason said, the act, the movie was boring for me, I needed some more action. I don't think it was the best movie in the world. I like the climax of the movie, uh, which, where you really get to see the action play out in the cemetery. Uh, I actually like the story. I think just fine, uh, the conflict between the brothers and, uh, where they stand on, uh, the issue and, uh, what they believe is justice and, uh, avenging the death of their brother. I actually did like the conflict with Patrick Swayze and Liam Neeson. It wasn't, like, the best story or anything, but, uh, I... I didn't think it was a bad movie. Uh, I thought it. I think the whole uh, hillbilly aspect of it made the movie interesting. It stood out from being just a generic action film, and I thought it was all right. Not one of my favorites, but it was all right. Uh, I needed more crazy hillbilly cousins like in that last scene at the cemetery. Yeah. Uh, I guess we could have got more of them, but I, I like that we got, especially the whole thing with the the bus with the snakes, I thought was actually a pretty uh, creative kill. I wish we got to see Liam Neeson go after Ben Stiller, like that, that frustrated me. I wish we got a cool scene where he really got to see what he did. That would have been, uh, that would have been an amazing action scene with him, but I guess we... Had to wait till uh, Taken, I guess, to see a good Liam Neeson action scene, which, again, I've not seen Taken, which is crazy. So, uh, I guess that wraps up the watch party on Next of Kin. I thought this was an alright movie. If I had to grade it, I would say I'd probably go three and a half out of five. I thought it was an alright movie. I like the story. Uh, the cast in this was pretty good. I kept poking fun of Liam Neeson doing a, a redneck accent, but I still thought he was good in the role, and I liked his character along with Patrick Swayze. I actually thought they were the standouts. Uh, some of the other actors were not, I think, were underutilized. Uh, Bill Paxton, but then again, his character got killed off in like the first 
20 minutes, so you didn't really get much of him. Uh, and I feel like they wasted Ben Stiller as well. Uh, he didn't really make that big of an impact, but like Jason said, it's crazy how many good actors there were before they were really famous, you know, like Bill Paxton and Helen Hunt and Ben Stiller and Liam Neeson. This movie came out before their careers really took off. And it's quite a fascinating movie, for sure. Um, I actually have the Wikipedia article on here. Uh, let's see. It says it has uh, mixed reviews for critics. From critics. Uh, it says it has a 50% on Rotten Tomatoes. Uh, Patrick Swayze was rarely nominated for Worst Actor. Uh, but it was between two of his movie roles that year. That and Animal House. Uh, but he lost to William Shatner in Star Trek V. Him getting a Razzie nomination for this movie is a little harsh. I actually enjoy them in the film. But I haven't seen Roadhouse. So I can't really com uh, comment on that. It says in Sweden the film was retitled Dirty Fighting. To capitalize on Swayze's earlier success with Dirty Dancing. Now that's funny. <laughs> Imagine this movie being called Dirty Fighting. Uh, and then it says, uh, Siskel and Ebert were not impressed with the film on their worst of 1989 show. Uh, Roger Ebert described the scene where the women are preparing lunch for the men getting ready for comment as desperation time at the old screenwriting factory. I didn't really think much of it, but he didn't really care for that. Gene Siskel mocked the bow and arrow fight at the climax, suggesting that it might have had more impact had it been shot in the daytime instead of night. Uh, I actually thought the nighttime setting gave it more ambiance, but eh, I respect your opinion on that. Siskel and Ebert are too good of a... Uh, critics, you gotta respect their opinions even if you agree. Oh yeah, I did recognize some of these uh, country artists on the soundtrack. I commented Charlie Daniels, Ricky Van Shelton, and George Jones. The Brothers song played in the end credits. Oh, Patrick Swayze sang that? Wow, that's crazy. He sang that with Larry Gatlin. I know Larry Gatlin, best known for all the gold in California. Uh, but wow, I didn't realize Patrick Swayze sung that, uh, partially sung that song. Wow. Uh, wait, there's two brother songs, is that, and then, oh, the, oh, Brother the Brother might have been the other one, that was Greg Allman, one of the Allman brothers. Ah, gotcha. Wow. Uh, that was a pretty good soundtrack. I guess Patrick Swayze was the biggest actor here because of Dirty Dancing and Roadhouse. I haven't actually seen either of those movies. Uh, I actually have a physical copy of Dirty Dancing, but I've never actually gotten around to watching it. Uh, I know Rashad's a big fan of Roadhouse. I think it's one of his like, guilty pleasure movies. Alright, so... If I don't have any more comments, um, I guess I'll be wrapping up this live stream. Okay, but Helen Hunt, Liam Neeson, and Ben Stiller will become bigger in the 90s and zeros. I'm pretty sure Liam Neeson's breakout role, I think, was Schindler's List. I don't know when Ben Stiller broke big. I'm thinking Meet the Parents. Helen Hunt, I've only seen her in, like, Twister and Castaway off the top of my head, but it's cool seeing them in an earlier movie, even though they weren't, not all these actors were uh, utilized the best, especially Ben Stiller. But like I said, the movie's alright. I thought it was an alright movie. Uh, I had some fun with it. Alright, uh, that wraps up this watch party. Thank you for all that tuned in live to watch uh, Next of Kin with me. If you're watching the replay, what did you think of this film? Did you love it? Did you hate it? Were you mixed on it? Let's have a nice, civil, healthy discussion in the comments below. If you enjoyed this video, don't forget to give it a thumbs up. Click the subscribe button to see more content. And the notification bell next to it. So you can be notified of future videos, including movie reviews, live streams, and watch parties like...
oh, excuse me, and, and watch parties like this one. I hope you enjoyed this video. I got more of these videos planned coming real soon. I hope you all have a wonderful night, and I'll see you all in the next one. Take care, everybody.